Properties of Vectors Consider a case in which two or more vectors act at the same point. When this occurs, it is possible to find a resultant vector that has the same net effect as the combination of the individual vectors. Imagine looking down from the second level of an airport at a toy car moving at 0.80 meters per second across a walkway that moves at 1.5 meters per second. How can you determine what the car's resultant velocity will look like from your viewpoint? Vectors can be moved parallel to themselves in a diagram. Note that the car's resultant velocity, while moving from one side of the walkway to the other, will be the combination of two independent motions. Thus, the moving car can be thought of as traveling first at 0.80 meters per second across the walkway and then at 1.5 meters per second down the walkway. In this way, we can draw a given vector anywhere in the diagram as long as the vector is parallel to its previous alignment so that it still points in the same direction. To achieve this, we adapt a scale. We will consider that every 1 meter per second is equivalent to 10 centimeters on the graph. Therefore, the velocity of 0.80 meters per second is equivalent to 0.8 times 10, and this equals 8 centimeters, so the velocity of 0.8 meters per second will be presented by 8 centimeters line on the graph. By using the ruler and considering the direction, we draw a line that is its length is 8 centimeters, pointing up. For the horizontal velocity of 1.5 meters per second, it is equivalent to 1.5 times 10, and this equals 15, so the horizontal velocity of the car will be presented by a line that is its length is 15 centimeters on the graph. Although both vectors act on the car at the same point, the horizontal vector has been moved up so that its tail begins at the tip of the vertical vector. Thus, you can draw one vector with its tail starting at the tip of the other, as long as the size and the direction of each vector do not change. The resultant vector can then be drawn from the tail of the first vector to the tip of the last vector. This method is known as the triangle method of addition or polygon method of addition. The magnitude of the resultant vector can be measured using a ruler. To find the actual velocity in meter per second, we divide the length of the resultant vector by 10, considering our drawing scale, to get the car's velocity. The direction of the car's velocity is indicated by the angle between the resultant vector and the x-axis. The angle of the resultant vector which represents the car direction can be measured with a protractor. So the car resultant velocity is 1.7 meters per second, with an angle of 28 degrees with the x-axis. In the next video, we will develop a technique for adding vectors that is less time-consuming because it involves a calculator instead of a ruler and protractor. Vectors can be added in any order. When two or more vectors are added, the sum is independent of the order of the addition. This idea is demonstrated by a runner practicing for a marathon along city streets. The runner executes the same four displacements in each case, but the order is different. Regardless of which path the runner takes, the runner will have the same total displacement, expressed as d. Similarly, the vector sum of two or more vectors is the same, regardless of the order in which the vectors are added, provided that the magnitude and direction of each vector remain the same. Vector subtraction. Vector subtraction makes use of the definition of the negative of a vector. The negative of a vector is defined as a vector with the same magnitude as the original vector, but opposite in direction. For instance, consider a car moving with 30 meters per second to the west. The negative of the velocity of the car traveling 30 meters per second to the west is negative 30 meters per second to the west. This is equivalent to plus 30 meters per second to the east. Thus, adding a vector to its negative vector gives zero. When subtracting vectors in two dimensions. First, draw the negative of the vector to be subtracted. Then add that negative vector to the other vector by using the triangle method of addition. Example. To find a plus b minus c, we first find the negative of the vector c by having the same magnitude of the vector, the length, then we change its direction to be opposite. Then we add the vectors by using the triangle method. Multiplying or dividing vectors by scalars results in vectors. There are mathematical operations in which vectors can multiply other vectors, but they are not needed at this level. However, we will study vectors multiplied by scalars with a vector as the result. For example, if a cab driver obeys a customer who tells him to go twice as fast, that cab's original velocity vector, v cab, is multiplied by the scalar number 2. The result, written 2 v cab, is a vector with a magnitude twice that of the original vector and pointing in the same direction. On the other hand, if another cab driver is told to go twice as fast in the opposite direction, this is the same as multiplying by the scalar number negative 2. 
The result is a vector with a magnitude 2 times the initial velocity, but pointing in the opposite direction, written as minus 2 v cab. Example. A roller coaster moves 85 meters horizontally and then travels 45 meters at an angle of 30.0 degrees above the horizontal. Use graphical techniques to predict its displacement from its starting point. The answer. First, to be able to represent the roller coaster's 85 meters movement horizontally, then 45 meters at angle 30 degrees above the horizontal, we need first to choose a scale. In this example, it is suitable to choose the scale 5 meters to be equivalent to 1 centimeter on the graph. So the 85 meters is equivalent to 85 divided 5 equals 17 centimeters. And the 45 meters is equivalent to 45 divided 5 equals 9 centimeters. Now we draw the first displacement for the roller coaster, the 17 centimeters horizontally. Then we measure angle 30 degrees from the head of the first vector we draw. Next, we draw a line that represents the second movement for the roller coaster which is 9 centimeters. Now, we draw the resultant vector which represents the roller coaster displacement from the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector. Finally, we measure the resultant vector with the ruler to find its length. Then we multiply the resultant vector length by 5 to find the actual displacement in meter. To indicate the final displacement direction, we use the protractor to find the angle of the resultant vector related to the x-axis. A novice pilot sets a plane's controls, thinking the plane will fly at 2.50 times 10 to power 2 kilometers per hour to the north. If the wind blows at 75 kilometers per hour toward the southeast, what is the plane's resultant velocity? Use graphical techniques. The answer. To find the resultant velocity for the plane, we need first to adapt a drawing scale so that we can draw the velocity vectors. By having a look at the velocity's magnitude, I think the best scale to use in this example is that every 10 meters per second represented by 1 centimeter on the graph. So to find the equivalent vector for the velocity 2.5 times 10 to power 2, we divide it by 10. The answer is 25. So the plane's velocity will be presented by a vector that has a length of 25 centimeters, pointing toward the north, up. The wind velocity is 75 kilometers per hour, and the equivalent vector for it, according to our scale is 75 divided 10, and this is equal to 7.5 centimeters, the direction for this vector is to the southeast, which is 45 degrees below the x-axis. Now, we draw the first vector which represents the plane's velocity using the ruler. So we draw a line that is its length is 25 centimeters pointing up. Then we use the protractor to indicate the angle for the second vector, which represents the wind velocity. We measure an angle 45 degrees below the x-axis. Then we draw a line with a length of 7.5 centimeters passing through the point, which indicates the negative 45 degrees. Finally, we draw the resultant vector that represents the resultant velocity for the plane, from the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector. By using the ruler, we measure the resultant vector length. To find the actual velocity for the plane we multiply the answer by 10. To find the direction of the resultant velocity for the plane we use the protractor to measure its angle related to the x-axis.